we have taken a long journey uh, through this topic so far. We've done a lot of involved algebra. We are going to make an exciting discovery today. So, to help you get the context for that, I just want us to remember this. Okay? This is what some of the things I loved about, loved about mathematics, but is kind of um, like is 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 frustrating when you don't appreciate like why it is the way it is. I love that now you guys can look at those three lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven symbols. That's like what? That's like less than a tenth of a tweet. Okay? <laughs> you can look at those ten symbols and they are laden with meaning now. In fact, I hope like images start to pop into your head as you look at each line. You understand what is being referred to here, right? We've been exploring this, this particular ratio, namely eccentricity, right? And we said, well, if you just muck about with it, Think about the focus and directrix, and then you explore these, you get different shapes. The shapes that you get in order are the circle. When you increase, you get the ellipse, right? It stretches out. And then if you stretch far enough, you hit a certain point, when that ratio hits one to one, right? You don't get a closed shape anymore with a, with a center and, um, and with two foci. Instead, you get a familiar shape, okay? And we were we spent a lot of time in lockers and parametrics dealing with that guy. Okay. Now I said this leads to the obvious question, right? Of what happens? What does this mean? And we saw that it would present some problems for us, right? We were looking and we're like, oh, you get like b squared being a negative number. What's that supposed to mean? Okay, especially being that b is meant to be a leg. Complex numbers are not going to sit very happily on that Cartesian plane, okay? So what we are going to do is we are going to grab the bull by the horns and we're just going to go for it, okay? Now, the algebra is a little bit involved sometimes, but we're going to draw some pictures and hopefully that will help us make some sense of it, okay? So, let's begin by picking some values. We're going to explore this way in a concrete example just like we did before when we discovered the ellipse, okay? So, for example, I'm going to pick a focus at, no, nope, wrong way, 4, 0, um, a directrix oriented this way. And just for the sake of simplicity, let's choose the smallest integer that is satisfying this e is greater than 1 value and see what pops out. Okay. Now, with our variable point p, all I need to say is that the relationship, the algebraic relationship that governs all of these is simply this. ps equals e PD. That's all it is. Uh, and that's why PS and PD is that ratio. Okay? I require knowledge of two points and also knowledge of perpendicular distance. Okay? And then some algebra is going to unfold and an equation is going to jump out at us. It takes kind of like four or five or six lines, but it's just algebra. So would you do me a favor and start off? You've got your two point distance formula, you've got your perpendicular distance formula, you know to square, collect like terms, and see what emerges. Okay? I'll give you a few minutes. I hope you get there. There are, I think there are maybe three, three intervening lines probably ish in between here where I have to collect some line terms and so on. But this should be what emerges out. This should be what you get. Okay. Oh, you can sub equals. Yeah, I know what the eccentricity is, right? Like it's a value. I've got a particular <laughs> ratio in here. Okay. I'm like dying here. Okay. Now, let's have a look at this. It is both immediately familiar but also kind of unsettlingly different, right? Because it looks almost identical to an ellipse, except it ain't, right? What would make this an ellipse? If there was a plus here, that would be an ellipse, okay? Great, right? But it's not, and like when you go through this, I remember the first time I did this, I thought, am I, am I doing something wrong? But you know when you get a sign wrong, and you're like, did I take it across and not change plus or minus? But you've done it right, this is it. This is what you should end up with. I thought it in this familiar a squared, b squared, one, because due to the fact that there's this um, different stretching and um, different horizontal horizontal and vertical stretching, again, there's no number over here that makes sense as like the radius for a circle or any other kind of common measure. You've just got this kind of proportionality to your shape. Okay. Now, some of you will have seen <coughs> immediately, like you recognize this formula, oh, I know what that looks like, okay? But I'm really going to very consciously avoid that because it's not a given what this is at all. And I want us to work through, like, how do I go from this to an actual picture? Because that's where I'm trying to end up, okay? So, my first suggestion is, well, you've got this equation, 
what's the most important like geometric fact that you can get out of an equation when you're trying to graph it? Probably the easiest thing? I'd probably say the intercepts, right? Let's go for the x and y intercepts, right? Now for reasons that will become very clear in a second, I'm going to try and go for the y intercepts first. So I'm going to say let x equal zero. Okay, this is to find the y intercepts, right? So I go, well this term disappears, so I get this equals one. And as soon as you write that, you think, uh-oh. Okay, this is why I did it first, right? Now, remember, we're on the Cartesian plane, okay? So what this means is, because I'm looking for values that do this, this means there are no real solutions for y, okay? Now, since there are no real solutions for y, what was I trying to find? I was trying to find y intercepts. That means there aren't any y intercepts, okay? And this corresponds exactly to when you have a parabola, right? And you go ahead and you try and solve for y equals zero, and you don't get a solution. We don't get a real one anyway. No intercept, that's all it means. Positive, um, um, positive definite, negative definite, whatever. Okay. So no y intercepts, that's okay. Let's try the other ones. Let's let y equal zero and see what happens there. This looks, mercifully, a little more friendly, right? So your y squared term disappears, and then you say, well, I know how to solve that. That's great. Okay, so I have some intercepts. That's really, really good, okay? Is there anything else I can work? What would be the next obvious step for like, I've got a, let's, let's draw a, a graph over here, Cartesian plane, and let's start to add this information on as we go. So plus or minus two, that's nice. Uh, one, two, three, four. There's one of my intercepts. And one, two, three, four. There's my other intercept. Okay. okay, so that's nice. One, I'm at it. Okay. I might as well also include, like, I began with some geometric features, did I not? I might as well sort of include them in on my Cartesian plane, right? I started off with a focus and a directrix. Where are they? Over here. The focus is at um, 4 comma 0, right? So that's over here. That's S at 4 comma 0. And then I got my directrix, which is this uh, this vertical line in here. Okay, so x equal 1. Say that again. Ah, yes, I'm so glad you mentioned that. All right. 